Jason Statham's father was a boxer and gymnast, from an early age attracted his son to this, he loved martial arts and often used little Jason as a punching bag, only later the future actor would become a specialist in the field of martial arts, and together with Guy Ritchie, he will take up Brazilian jiu-jitsu. In the late 90s, an advertising agent working primarily with athletes invited Statham to host participation in the Tommy Hilfiger advertising campaign, so Jason starred in a jeans advertisement, became the advertising face of the brand, with which is where his modeling career began. Richie was intrigued by the street experience Statham trade and was impressed by his modeling work, he invited Jason to audition and suggested pretend to be a street vendor, and convince him to buy a set of fake gold jewelry. Guy Ritchie needed an authentic character, and this man it turned out to be me, because they don't teach such things in drama school. Jason managed to sell Guy Ritchie nothing a worthwhile product, and when he tried to return it, Statham showed such graceful inflexibility that Ritchie immediately cast him in the role, in Ritchie's next crime comedy Snatch, Statham played the organizer of underground boxing fights, in the beginning the character of Jason was conceived as a minor one, but during filming the role became larger, and towards the exit the film was released, Statham took the place of the main narrator in the plot, in the 2000s Statham made a breakthrough, the actor made his debut in American movie playing the role of the English drug dealer in the film Turn It Up. Then got a role in the thriller John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars, will play with Jet Li in the science fiction film The One, and then also star in The Italian Job, but the film that made Jason a star was The Carrier The Transporter, the most interesting facts about the trilogy, how it was filmed and what happened behind the scenes in this video. The actor did most of his own stunts and drove the car almost entirely chase time, in the original concept Frank was gay, the love scene with Xu Qi was added specifically, to divert attention from any possible remnants of this aspect in the script. In this scene there is actually Jason Statham hanging from the bottom of the truck. I was simply tied up with wire, the stuntman assured me that I was completely security. When Lai is preparing breakfast for Frank, she accidentally burns his fingers and then touches his ear, this is actually a method used to cool the burn, since the earlobe helps dissipate heat, the oracle has an excellent blood supply, applying burns will not protect your fingers from burns but can significantly reduce the consequences. Earlobe is used as a natural cooling radiator, in addition when a person touches his body, the brain makes a decision to dull and weaken signals from irritants screaming alarm, since it understands that the body does this itself according to its own team, when Lai is looking through photos in Frank's house, she sees a photo of a little boy with a monkey, which is actually Jason Statham. Cool car. BMW 7. What kind of 700 is this? 10. 5 liter? Frank's car BMW 750. This is the third generation of luxury 7 Series cars produced from 94 to 2001 by the German automaker BMW, along with gasoline engines for the first time in the history of the company, a diesel engine began to be installed on luxury cars, in addition to a model with an extended wheelbase and a version with special protection. A limousine was also produced, in total 327,000 and a half cars were produced. During this scene what was thought to be gear oil is actually molasses syrup, a molasses product incomplete acid or enzymatic hydrolysis of starch, formed as a byproduct during the production of sugar and starch. Xu Qi spoke almost no English when she was cast, the producers told her in advance gave her the script, so she could practice with an English teacher in Hong Kong, but still because language barrier Xu Qi and Jason Statham could not communicate behind the scenes, the actress called their communication similar to the communication of a rooster with a duck. Matt Scholes wanted his character to be very skinny. I lost about 18 kilograms preparing for this role, how did I do it, I fasted for 16 days. You can't immediately recognize this guy but he played the fast and the furious, he appeared in the first part then repeated his role in Fast Five, by the way Jason Statham will also appear in this franchise and will play the villain in Furious 7. 
leaving the police station after the explosion of Frank's house, Lai goes to catch a taxi, it's a taxi white Peugeot 406. The same taxi that drove the main character of the film Taxi directed by Luc Besson. When Frank raids the villa, he hides behind the door floor, to shelter from fire, in real life these bullets would easily pierce this wooden door, and of course it would be useless for protection against firearms, however, all this can be explained by the fact that this door had a core of solid steel, given the criminal nature of the homeowner it is quite possible that he will have such a reinforced door. When Frank falls back through the truck's glass, it shatters into thousands of individual small pieces, although automotive windshield glass is tempered safety glass, that breaks into small rounded pieces, in fact they should stay in place, the windshield safety glass is plastic sheet between two layers of tempered glass, so when broken it does not break like a single sheet. With a budget of $25 million, the film grossed $44 million. Initially there was no certainty whether there would be a sequel to The Transporter, but after high DVD sales the new film was quickly given the green light. Jason Statham returns to the role of Frank Martin, a professional transporter, who delivers packages and not asking questions. The second part takes place in Miami, where Frank is hired to drive a boy who is soon kidnapped, and he is the only one who can save him, the film was supposed to be rated R, but the studio demanded a PG-13 rating to attract a wider audience. According to the actor who introduces Black Audi A8W12, one of the joys for the actor was to regain the high-speed driving skill that he acquired during the filming of the first film. Driving this car at high speed was a real adventure, but I must admit that training and filming became easier for me the second time, this time since I knew what to expect. Lola's signature machine is two modified Glock 18 pistols with extended magazines for 32 rounds, silencers and laser sights. Only mobile phones are visible in this film Nokia phones, among them the phone that Frank used in his car the Nokia 8910, this model stopped being produced at least a couple of years before the film was released, by the way the 8910 cannot be used in the USA, because it only works in the 900 and 1800 GSM bands. In America it was then only two bands GSM 850 and 1900. Like Mission Impossible 2 the plot of the sequel involves an artificially created virus, in the film Frank finds out that Johnny injected Jack with an artificial virus using it as a weapon, to kill his father Jefferson and sabotage the conference. In the scene where Frank fights with Dimitri Frank tells him that he was not giving him a virus but water. This is an allusion to another 20th century studio's Fox film The Fly 2. The main antagonist of the film Anton Bartok tells the main character of the film Martin Brundle that he was injected with water, and he made him think that he was given a special drug to treat his illness associated with accelerated growth. At the beginning of the film the girl trying to rob Frank in the garage is holding the gun incorrectly, her index finger is not on the trigger, Frank should have easily noticed this.
When an Audi spins and slides sideways in a parking lot, the car knocks down metal supports, when the car stops it receives absolutely no damage from hitting these obstacles. When the gas ignites from the cylinder in the doctor's office, the cylinder flies down the hallway, you can see that the valve is still intact, in reality the gas leaving the cylinder through a valve that is at a 90 degree angle to the cylinder, would cause it to spin, rather than fly out and fly in a straight line, in addition if the gas pressure was sufficient to move the cylinder, it would do so regardless of whether it was on fire or not. The burning and subsequently expanding gas will have no effect on the cylinder, when it is behind outside the valve, since the hot gas does not increase the force acting on the cylinder, in the scene where Frank fights Johnny's men in the doctor's office, Lola continuously fires without reloading, until she goes outside, the submachine gun she uses usually has no more than 30 rounds of ammunition per clip, yet she fires more than 30 shots from each weapons without reloading. Gulfstream series aircraft do not have direct access to the wheel arch for the front landing gear, so Frank would never be able to get into the cab by lifting the landing gear. When the doctor throws the vial out the window Frank can't fall fast enough to catch them, objects fall from same acceleration rate, the only changes are wind resistance to resistance. With a budget of $32 million the film collected 85, out of three parts Jason Statham the actor likes this film the most. This is interesting but Jason Statham did not film in Odessa, in the takes that were filmed in this city a double was filmed instead of him, in these episodes the upper part of the face is in the shadow, and all frames where Budapest is shown has nothing to do with this city, only the Real Parliament is visible at the beginning of the scene. Any other place or object is shown as located in Budapest does not exist in real life. Natalia Rudikova who was before this film she worked as a hairdresser and had no acting experience, this is interesting but when producer Luke Besson saw her while walking through the streets of New York, caught up with the girl and asked her to take acting lessons, and told her to come to him for an audition. It's always very funny to watch a person who has never acted in a movie and doesn't understand a lot, I remember after filming. In some scenes Natalia approached the director and said, no no I want to do this and let's do it differently take, but Olivier replied that we need to move on, and Natalia insisted saying no I really want to reshoot, it was so funny to watch. We all had a lot of fun, although it was very cold, because the start of filming fell in the winter, but despite the frost we still had a great time, and besides everyone around me they helped a lot, so it wasn't all very difficult. Valentine's tattoo on her neck is a Chinese character, it is a symbol of peace, director Olivier Megaton considers the Transporter franchise as a cross between the James Bond series and Die Hard. The explosive bracelet was inspired by the movie Wedlock, in which Rutger Hauer and Mimi Rogers played, in the film they wear collars with explosives around their necks, which can explode if they move more than 100 meters from each other. The main character drives an armored and bulletproof Audi which does not leave traces from numerous bullets, but twice Frank can simply easily kick out this window. The plot of the film is that the daughter of a government minister is kidnapped, to force him to sign a contract, once the contract is signed the daughter returns, the minister has no logical reason not to sign the contract, because how only his daughter will be returned he can publicly announce what happened, then arrest all those who threatened him and announce that the contract was signed illegally. After all officials can declare any contract they terminate void for much less compelling reasons, water from the lake flooding Frank's car would cause a short circuit in the transmitter, which would lead to the detonator of the bracelet, and here's what Statham said about his character. He has his own moral principles, perhaps what he is doing is wrong from the point of view of the law, but instinctively level on the contrary it is very true, he has an idea of what is really valuable and worthy of respect, and is not like a guy who brandishes a gun and unnecessarily blows people's heads off. My character tries to keep the destruction around him to a minimum, and he doesn't like it at all conflicts. He is a little different from ordinary people, and this is attractive, because usually, we are much more sociable and more adventurous than some may think. 
Jason Statham pays great attention to physical exercises, this is basically the answer to the question where Statham comes from such steel muscles and a magnificent torso, the basic principle classes is that the actor never repeats the same training and exercise regimen. Jason believes that this technique accelerates the process of muscle growth. Statham also practices fighting techniques. He practices Thai boxing, kickboxing, and jiu-jitsu. Probably something between an ordinary gym with Olympic trainers. There are compound exercises, other different loads, and there is also a place with mats for all sorts of exercises where you learn to fall from windows. And there is a part with a weapon section. And there you can learn how to work with any weapon. And there is a large free space. There is everything you might need to learn the techniques for an action movie. When Luke Besson announced plans for a relaunched transporter, the most famous series of Statham, Statham itself was left out, instead the main role went to Ed Scrain, who will play Frank Martin. I would love to do this franchise again, but they wanted me to sign for three more films without even looking at the script, and they offered me less money for all three films than they paid me for one. Like most films of this type entertainment is more important than believability, as always the villains shoot a huge amount of ammunition from powerful automatic weapons, without ever finding their target, the action heroes and their girlfriends clearly have a wonderful immunity to bullets, of course those who love action films can say that in this genre you can't do without it. And this is fair, but the main problem of these films is not lack of realism, but the fact that it simply does not have a decent plot although this did not stop Jason Statham from becoming a star.